On this episode of Motivate's Do It Yourself Garage, we are going to explain how a drive-by-wire system works by making one. The traditional way to open and close the throttle was with the steel cable, like this one right here. Today, just about every car uses electric motors, electronics, and wires to control the throttle. This is known as a drive-by-wire system or electronic throttle control ETC. To show you how this works in detail, we've made a simple drive-by-wire system. And here it is. Now, it may not look like much, but this is a fully functioning drive-by-wire system. Let me talk about the different components we have here. We have our pedal position sensor, we have our ECU, and of course we have our throttle body. With the pedal position sensor, a change in position causes a change in output voltage. This output voltage is read by the ECU. The ECU then will control the motor and the throttle body. Now, the motor and the throttle body takes a lot of power, more power than our ECU can switch. So, our ECU will then simply switch this electronic switch called the MOSFET, and then the MOSFET will handle the heavy power requirements of the motor in our throttle body. Now, you may be wondering, what is that sound? That sound is how the power is being controlled. Now, it's referred to as a pulse with modulated signal, and the best way to describe it really is not to. Instead, I'm going to show you. We are now going to look at the actual signal that is being sent to the motor in the throttle body. Now, this here is a PicoScope 2000, which is part of a digital storage oscilloscope. That allows us to see the signal that's actually traveling on the wires to the motor of our throttle body. Let's now bring it up on screen. Okay, there it is. And now we will slowly turn this up and we can see. So this line here is zero volts and this line up here is just under 12 volts. Now the time that it's on for is this little bit of a peak right here. So right now it's not on for very much. It's on for about 2, 2.4%. As I continue to turn this up, we can see it gets wider and wider. And then at some point, our throttle body starts to open. There it is right there. So right now we are about 29%, meaning we are switching full power for about 29% of the time. As I continue to increase this, there we are, our throttle body is wide open throttle. And if I go all the way to 100%, the whining sound goes away because we have a constant voltage going to our throttle body. We are no longer doing a pulse with modulated signal. Let me now slowly close it. We can see our duty cycle slowly decreasing, our on time is slowly decreasing until we are right there. And it's like that. And that is the pulse width modulated signal that goes to a typical throttle body to control how much it opens. Some people seem to think drive by wire systems are slow. And as you can see, the throttle really didn't open all that quick. However, I have programmed a button right here that will open the throttle fully as fast as possible. Let's see how quick it can be. Okay, that's pretty quick. So, drive-by-wire can be responsive. It all depends upon how it is programmed. All right, let's wrap up this episode. I hope you have a better understanding of how drive-by-wire systems work. We used a $13 Arduino Uniclone from Amazon to read the voltage output of a position sensor which then sent a pulse width modulated signal to the electric motor in the throttle body. Now, the throttle body used in this episode is from an Infinity G37, which is typical of most electronic throttle bodies. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you.